Hello again, this is Fogrun with another installment of Flight School Academics for this, the 2nd of March, 2954, or 2024 if you're stuck in the past. This is a presentation as part of an ongoing series of academics for the members of the Aurora Republic, the premier role-playing organization in Star Citizen. If you are new to the Aurora Republic or visiting for the first time, let me start by saying welcome. Glad to have you with us. Love to hear more from you if you're interested in hearing more from us. And we're a lawful good organization focused on role-play, exploration, social interaction, currently active in recruiting on Spectrum and Gilded. We're going over basic cargo concepts, uh, basic aviation 100 Echo, uh, which is part of our uh, undergraduate pilot training syllabus. What we're going to talk about tonight, um, uh, we're going to talk about the vehicle cargo grid uh, as it works in Star Citizen the units of cargo measurement and then uh, what the loading and unloading procedures are as they currently stand. This has been going under undergoing uh some amount of uh improvement as of late and those things have been incorporated into this briefing and uh, as well as a look at what's possibly coming or not possibly what is known to be coming in the future so the vehicle cargo grid is basically the whole centerpiece of how you haul cargo in star citizen um and it is a smart grid it is a 3d cubed space that is specific to your vehicle um it is in the vehicle's hold and uh, it is how cargo is organized uh, into the three-dimensional space for your cargo hold. So um, there is an organizational snap on that three-dimensional grid for standard commodity containers, which we'll talk about what those standard sizes are next here in a minute. Um, and it is a smart system. So if you do put something else into the area of your, of your uh, cargo area that uh, the grid is at, the grid will actually know it's there and it'll subtract the cube space of that object out from the rest of the grid so that it cannot be included into uh, putting car uh, commodity containers uh, on top of where you have, say, a vehicle stored or where you've tractor beamed in um, some sort of loot or salvage that you've uh, brought in. Like a say you you pull a gun off of that salvage ship, that derelict ship, and you drop it down on the floor where that gun is at it basically the Q, the three dimensional cargo grid will go okay that space right here is no longer usable because there's an object there which is pretty cool that they've figured out how to do that tech uh just like i said yes object sensitive so it'll sense vehicles any hand placed objects or boxes just like you see there um so like where that dragonfly in the picture is it's subtracted out of the total cube space but the remainder is still usable um, so those units of standard cargo uh, or SCU, standard cargo unit, uh, is the basically uh, is exactly what the name says. That's the standard measurement size of what we call the uh, one SCU box. Its interior space is intended to be one meter by one meter by one meter and one meter cube. Um, however, the box has an exterior wall um, whose thickness is one eighth of a meter. So the total exterior dimensions, of course, is. One and an eighth, one and an eighth, one and an eighth for a total of 1.424 uh, meters cubed. This creates some interesting mathematics uh, when you're talking about um, getting into bigger uh, uh, cargo containers um, that are multiplications of one SEU because you start getting into something that's called bonus, uh, bonus space or bonus SEU, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So um, one SEU is not what you buy and sell commodities at those actual sell sales units is one one hundredth of an SCU. So you buy in you can buy an individual a down to individual units. However, um, it takes one hundred of a sales unit of an of of a commodity before it equals one SCU. And one of the things to remember is that fractions of uh, of a full SCU will populate your cargo grid with a full box even though the box isn't full you'll have the full size one scu box even if there's only uh one remainder so those remainders like here in this case where we're buying astatine um if we're buying 1700 that should give us 17 scu if we buy 1700 and two like it shows in here then we'll get 18 one scu boxes because you'll get the 17 full uh, that covers the 1700 and that last two SEU or two sales unit, those last two units of astatine will create a whole uh, one SEU 100 commodity unit 
uh, box, even though there's only two units of of uh, um, acetine in there and 98 units worth of open space. So keep that in mind when you're uh, buying and trying to maximize the space in your in your hauler um, so that you can uh, uh, adjust and everything. If you can, um, if you're going to go with like possibly loading up with multiple uh, different commodities. Yep, just like I said there, the remainders will comprise a whole SU box of space, even if it's only partially filled. OK, so they do have larger SU boxes now. Um, this is fairly new. I think it was what, 21? 3.21 or 22 when they came in uh, along with the uh, cargo re with uh, as, as part of the ongoing cargo refactor here in Star Citizen. So we now have available to us also two SCU, four SCU, eight SCU, 16, 24 and 32 SCU boxes. They are uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and then in development, we also know that they've talked about 24, 128 and 256 SCU boxes, obviously, for like the really large hauling ops, like a.k.a. the whole series. Because you don't want to sit around with a hull E waiting to get to load it if you're going to do it, you know, if they're going to load it all with one SCU size boxes, that would take forever. So obviously there's uh, the economics of scale that would go there. However, while you notice that these are all intended to be uh, uh, multiplicative uh, uh, multiples of the smaller boxes, um, it does actually create um, some bonus SCU. Uh, math uh it's not a, i wouldn't call it a problem because it's not a problem it's actually a good thing but um and it all has to do with that wall thickness of the one scu box so if we want uh say a 16 scu box to just simply be uh the equivalent of 16 one scu boxes just stacked up you know too wide too high and four long the problem is is that extra one eighth of an scu of box exterior walls around the edges creates extra space when you when you do that on those interiors as demonstrated here in that sort of pinkish red zones where um if you actually do the math uh and go okay if a 16 su box is actually like the far right uh in this and where it's it's contiguous it's actually physical dimensions go way bigger than just 16 it's actually all the way up to 24 scu 24.05 SCU for the crate size using the same one eighth of an SCU or one eighth uh, of a meter thickness of the wall, but the walls only go around the entire interior of the SCU dimensions of the 16 SCU dimensions and not those interior dividers as shown in the red. You actually just those interior dividers areas get you a whole nother eight SCU if you do it that way. And of course, as you scale up, in number of uh, 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 SCU for a single container, then that bonus SCU keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, as you can see down here all the way up, and even to the ones that they're developing still. The 64, uh, the 64 SCU would have about 40 SCU of um, additional uh, additional space within it. 128 would 115, and the 256 SCU would actually almost double its space with 245 additional SCU over top. So um, it's interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see how, how that works. I think I have not tested this. I think that uh, Star Citizen, I think that the devs CIG are just ignoring it. Um, I think they're just that red is just considered just lost space. And I believe a 16 SCU box actually holds 1600 sales units of whatever they whatever uh, commodity is supposed to be in there and the quote unquote mathematical volume bonus that i just showed you is just considered to not exist so um that might be something that we actually kind of find out or go go try and see but um that's just kind of an interesting um bit of math there for you to kind of go oh that's kind of interesting i wonder what they're really doing um, it, I don't think it really matters in the grand scheme of things, which way they do it, whether they include it or not, as long, you know, um, but it'd be interesting to know uh, 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 whether or not they took the shortcut or whether they're actually including that uh, extra volume. Um, however, the good news is, is that we got bigger SU boxes to fill the hold with. Now, um, it's no longer, um, you know, if you're 
using some of the bigger haulers like a Caterpillar or a C2, C2, M2A2 uh, series, one of these bigger ones. Um, it's no longer, you're not going to have to always move just a one SCU box. You can start moving things in 16 SCU boxes and 32 SCU boxes, 24 SCU boxes um, for those larger quantities, which is goodness all the way around. Um, so how does this affect loading and what loading changes have happened and are coming? Um, so loading the grid, um, grid, the grid is still automatically loaded when you purchase at a kiosk for any sort of a commodity. So when you purchase or when you sale or buy, um, it's uh, either automatically lo it's either it's loaded automatically into your grid, whatever available grid space there is, or it's obviously taken away when you sell um, without you having to actually handle it yet. That's going to change in the near future. Um, everything else, like those hand delivery boxes, those one eighth SEU boxes that you can carry with just your hands. Um, that you have to pick up if you go do a delivery mission of go pick up box number blah 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 at location A and fly it to location B and go stick it in one of those um, box vending machine things or whatever. Those do not snap to the grid. Um, so when you slap them down there, they will be counted against the space of the grid. They will take away from usable space in the grid, but they don't snap and they don't auto load and they don't auto sell or any of that. Um, any salvaged or looted equipment also does not snap. But any salvage looted commodity boxes, if it's a commodity box, it'll snap to the grid. If it's not a commodity box, it won't snap to the grid, but it will be seen by the grid and properly subtracted from the grid. That's the way it stands right now. Um, so we're still able to like auto just auto load when you hit buy at the kiosk, it just boop, magically pops into your your grid on your um, ship now. Uh, the physicalized cargo and cargo refactor is still an ongoing project. So there is new things coming on the near horizon. The cargo elevators that we've heard all about, um, coming in our persistent hangers, persistent hangers are supposed to be showing up in 3.23 here, maybe hopefully in about a month, month, month and a half. Um, they were supposed to have the cargo freight elevators, uh, in there with them. They are freight elevators are not going to make it for 3.23.0. Um, but they are going to try to get them in in a, some sort of a 23.x patch uh, as quickly as they can. Um, there will be loading timers coming into the future uh, for the auto loading of com commodities, uh, loading and unloading of commodities. Um, uh, and then when they get the freight elevators in, those um, commodities won't go directly to your cargo grid. They'll go into that freight elevator and you'll have to figure out how to get them onto your ship in your while you're uh, hanging around in your hangar. So in the near future, I think we're going to be spending a whole lot of time running around in our hangars, uh, moving cargo, modifying ships, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be spending a lot of time inside your hangar uh, uh, while you're in game. Um, they have talked about there will be purchasable longshoremen services, basically um, being able to pay NPCs to do the load for you. Uh, don't know if you'll actually physically see them uh, doing the loading uh, work or whether it'll just be you pay them and it basically turns into a loading timer that eventually gets your your ship loaded up for you. Or, of course, you and your buddies can load it yourself by hand. Um, all of that will be a whole lot of fun. Does it actually work that way? Because the reclaimer at least takes 16 SU and puts them into 16 SU boxes. Um, I'm not sure. Does it actually work that way? Wonder. What do you mean? Does it actually? Um, yeah, the uh, reclaimer does give you the option of what size boxes to have the uh, construction materials and RMC spit out of the machine at the uh, Vulture does not. It only gives you the option. It doesn't even give you an option. It only spits out one SCU boxes because that's all it's capable of. Um, but these are we're talking commodities, not uh, reclaimed materials. Uh, if you go to a kiosk and buy commodities, uh, in theory, they will populate that commodity into the size SCU boxes that will be most efficient according to their algorithm. I have no idea what that is or what the rules of that algorithm is and how well it works. But you're not, uh, if you buy commodities, you're not just going to get all one SCU boxes. You're going to get. You know, if you if you're if you're buying a C2's worth of stuff, you will get the larger boxes. 
And that is it. That's uh, the basic cargo concepts as they stand right now. Yeah, stuff is changing and it's going to get kind of cooler and neater and a little more in depth in the future. All right, that wraps up this installment of Academics Foghorn. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any questions I didn't answer, please feel free to contact me via email, Gilded or Spectrum, or of course on the comments section below. If you're watching this later, I'll answer it to the best of my ability as soon as I see it. Hit those follow subscribe buttons as appropriate because uh, we're your org and you should be following your org. Uh, comment your comments in the comments. We're always uh, striving to improve our content. Uh, you can find out more information about the Aurora Republic at aurorarepublic.space or, of course, on Spectrum at robertspaceindustries.com slash aurora uh, slash org slash aurora rep. Uh, I'll see you next time. Follow and sign off. Wishing you a very pleasant remainder of your afternoon, morning, and or evening. And thank you so very much for watching. We will be right back in a moment to go play.